Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to show you how to make some sourdough rye caraway crackers. I'm doing this video in collaboration with one of my YouTube friends, Anna from Our Gabled Home. She has a really beautiful channel where she shows lots of from scratch cooking, lots of sourdough recipes, all kinds of things. I encourage you to go check out her channel and subscribe because I really think you're gonna love what she has as well. These are really delicious with different kinds of dips. We like them with liver pate. They're also really good with different creamy type of dips. You get to enjoy all the benefits of properly prepared grains with the sourdough benefits. Let's jump right into the recipe. So you're gonna want to start this recipe giving yourself plenty of time for the fermentation step to happen, so at least eight hours. You can either start this recipe early in the day and then bake them much later in the day, or you can start it the night before and then bake them the next day. What you're going to do is in a mixing bowl, add one cup of sourdough starter. This can be any kind of sourdough starter with any type of flour. It can be rye flour, whole wheat, white, whatever you have. Next, you're going to add one teaspoon of sea salt, one teaspoon of caraway seeds, two teaspoons of onion powder, a third a cup of melted fat. This can be butter, lard, tallow, whatever animal fat you like to use. And then when I was filming me putting this all together, my camera decided to have its battery die on me, so you're not gonna see this next part. But the next thing that you add is one cup of rye flour. This can be fresh ground rye flour or even sprouted rye flour. I'm just using freshly ground rye flour. So once all those ingredients are in the bowl, you're gonna mix them together thoroughly. It'll be a dough that comes together nicely, still a little bit sticky. You're going to cover that with a towel and let it sit and ferment for eight hours. After the fermentation process is done, the eight hours are up, you're going to work with the dough to form it into crackers. I have my oven preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You can use one of these silicone baking sheets or you can use parchment paper, but you're going to take the dough and divide it into two equal portions. We're going to use one of these portions for each of our sheets of crackers. Sometimes after it's been sitting, if you're in a drier climate like I am, you'll have some little crumbly edges. I just try to work those back in. So what we're gonna do is roll out the dough as thinly as we can. I try to get it as even as I can too. If you have trouble with the dough sticking to your rolling pin, I find that coating your rolling pin in fat, whatever animal fat you're using in the recipe, I'm using butter here, will really help. Sometimes just your hands are nice to use when smoothing it out too, but the rolling pin is nice to try to get it nice and thin. Now we're not going for perfection here. These are gonna end up being a little bit rustic looking. Perfectly fine. The idea is to just get it thin and even. Next, you're going to score them. You can use a pizza cutter like this or a sharp knife and cut them into the size of crackers that you want them to be. I usually just do little squares or rectangles like this. And then to keep them from puffing up in the oven, we're going to pierce them with a fork. Then we're going to sprinkle on just a little more salt. And I usually go 
press it in to make sure it's gonna stay nicely and not just fall off the top. And then we'll put the either parchment paper or silicone baking mat onto a pan. And then they're ready to go into the oven. So we're gonna bake these in the 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 15 minutes total. After 10 minutes, you're gonna wanna start checking on them and Usually the outside crackers will start to be done before the inside ones are. So in order to keep them from getting too brown or burned, I like to take those outside crackers away after 10 or 12 minutes and then let the rest of the crackers continue to bake. And then we'll just repeat the process with the other half of dough, same exact rolling out process. Once the crackers come out of the oven and are ready, then we're just going to put them onto a cooling rack to finish cooling and they'll crisp up more as they're on the rack. It's also a good idea at this point to break any crackers apart that are still attached. That will really help them cool and become crispy. And that's it. We'll just continue to let them cool completely and then you'll want to store these in an airtight container. They'll stay good in an airtight container at room temperature for about a week and then if you want to keep them around longer you can always freeze them. I hope that you enjoyed this recipe and I hope you give it a try. If you're on the GAPS diet you don't have to feel left out. I have a GAPS cheese cracker recipe that is great if you're avoiding all grains or on the GAPS diet. I'll have a link to that video down below so you can check that out if you're interested. Also check out that description box for links to where I like to buy my ingredients as well as free ebooks and other goodies. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would like to learn how to make some sourdough rye crackers. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.